The boss needs to give a speech at an industry function. At the last minute, he says, oh, I'm afraid I cannot make it. What's your name, please? Daniel. Daniel, could you please go deliver this paper for me? Daniel is wearing his pants and a suit jacket. While he's giving his speech, what buttons were he leaving down? Which buttons will he do up? So will your business social skills stand up to the test? That's why we're here this morning. Good morning. I'm Ungazi Chantal Colbrick, a business image consultant, doing what I have a passion for, talking about etiquette and social skills. So welcome. This morning we're going to have serious fun, I promise you. It's going to be interactive, but within limits, right? Okay. Think about this. Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion, or it will be killed. Every morning, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the gazelle, or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. In other words, you cannot afford to stay at one spot. You cannot afford to be complacent in today's world. This is 2019. You're no longer competing with companies in Nigeria. You're competing with companies in South Africa, in Ghana, in the UK, in the US. Am I right? Yes. So you've got to be on your toes 24, 7, 365. There's a saying that goes, your hard skills will take you there for yourself. Your hard skills will take you far, but your soft skills will take you farther. There's another saying that goes that good etiquette is better, you know it, but you don't need it. Then you need it, you don't know it. You're feeling me. So let's learn as much as we can. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to stop you some a lot of things today because this is a full day or sometimes two day session. The dining etiquette not alone is about an hour and a half. But I'll do what I can. And I promise you, at the end of the session, you still have a lot. You still, you still know a lot, right? You never get a second chance to make a great first impression. So let's try and get it right from the get go. When you think of etiquette, what comes to mind? Now, let me start with the lady. How you carry yourself, how you talk. How you carry yourself, how you talk. Courtesy. Courtesy. Culture. Culture. How you treat others. How you treat others. Manners. Manners. Comportment. Pardon? Do's and don'ts of relationship. So what am I here? You all know it. It's also the conduct of procedure required by good reading of prescribed authority to be observed in social or official life. Simply put, you can say proper behavior in a variety of settings. Why is it important? People buy into your packaging first. You're going out. When I'm talking about package, I'm not talking just about your outfit. Your packet is from it's everything you do, from the way you just walk in the room, through the door, the way you stand, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you laugh, the way you eat, the way you dress, the way you send your emails, the way you greet people. It's about everything, your totality. So they buy into your packaging before you buy into whatever you're going to sell, whether it's service or product. Three studies by the Harvard University the Stanford Youth Research Institute and the Carnegie Foundation confirm that the ability to get a job, keep that job, and advance in that job depends 85% on your, on your people skills and 15% on your technical skills and know-how. Especially as you climb up that corporate ladder, your people skills become even more important. That's why in some organizations, when you get to a particular position, they say, go and join the Cody Club, the Papa Club, or the Lagos Motor Club, or the Kesha Club. It's not because they want you, the organization wants you to just go and have fun. They want you to go and mingle. 
make with other people and bring that to your corner. Right? In other words, to become your clients. Any test studies must define distracting in life of people. We are human beings, there are things we do and we don't even know we're doing them because it's a conversation with us. You see some executives outside, they are just in and they spit. And he, he doesn't know this fact because he's so used to it. Am I right? Mm -hmm. You see some executives looking, digging for gold in their noses and even doing this. And uh, some others digging for silver in their ears or blowing the trumpet in, your, in their ears. Mm -hmm. When it's it itching. You see some executives and some ladies in the restaurant scratching their hair with enjoyment and vibe. And they don't even know that white dandruff is stuff is coming out. Or doing. Some male executives scratching themselves in funny places in public. I won't mention the places. Right? Some executives with their phones on when they're not supposed to be and meetings, things like that. Right? All these are implied distracting behavior. So when you take a course like this, you are so aware of yourself. When you're going to do such things, you next it, you catch yourself. You're going to do such things to catch yourself. Eventually, you stop that habit. You represent your organization positively. It's a confidence booster. I promise you that by the time we're done this morning, there will be a lot that you'll be practicing. And with etiquette, it's all about practice. Even the Queen of England was not born knowing etiquette. She was taught and she had to practice until she's now the epitome of etiquette in the Western world. <coughs> it's all about practice and we're going to start right now. As we are talking, we'll be demonstrating it, practicing it. It gives you that professional polish, poise, and panache. So you project the right image with both your internal and external customers. And remember, or you must realize, your brands. You all know, you all understand what brand is, right? Mm -hmm. This organization is a brand. How can you sell this brand if you cannot sell your own personal brand? So you are a brand. I'm Brand Evo. What's your name, please? I'm Uluwa I'm Brand Uluwa Do you understand? Because brand is the most effective way of packaging yourself. What's the most popular brand in the world? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. About 170 years ago, it just started as a humble cup medicine <coughs> until Pemberton now added um, some I mean, some, what's it, what's this thing? Gas, what do you call it, when you put gas into water sometimes? Carbonated water to it. And look at Coca-Cola today. They've been doing so much to it. So everywhere you go, there is a Coca-Cola. If you go to a country there's no Coke, just run away. You're scared, there's something wrong. You avoid conflicts and confrontation. Where you got good etiquette skills because you know how to carry yourself. You know how to talk. You're not just going to open your mouth to say any, anything to upset people. You communicate effectively with an opposing opinion. You don't have to fight and argue all the time in the workplace. You're better organized. You know how to package yourself, to organize yourself. That's why you bother. You avoid stress in your life. I'm at work from eight to five, why should I be stressed? Let me, I mean, let me enjoy myself in the workplace, do my work with no stress. You make the workplace happy and stress-free. I create an enabling environment and everybody practices that art of etiquette. And invariably, you increase workplace productivity. You bother so you don't do things like this or like that. Yes, you may have parties, send off parties, you may have uh, end of year parties, but let's fix it. When you go to a party, a work related party, you are still at work. 
I used to work in an advertising agency. And one of them, my boss would say, well, we go to a party, we will have a corporate parties or clients' parties. My boss would say, ah, oh, let your head down. Pretend you're not there. Have fun. And if you are foolish, you really let your head down. You dance and dance and do all sorts of things and drink. And on Monday morning, you look at you, you dance like a cheap stenographer. You can go to be ashamed of yourself, see the way you're drinking. So you're seen at work. So when you go to a party, a work-related party, remember, be aware that you are at work. Even if you love your Guinness or your, or your star, and you're used to taking four bottles, just try to take half of them, or one small bottle. I'm sorry. You bother? So we don't do what a lot of us do at work. Does that look familiar? <laughs> You're all laughing guilty now. <laughs> now we're going to talk about tips to about your brand. We're going to talk about your brand, your comportment, your talk, the way you talk. I'll just take a few minutes for it. Your business manners, your workplace manners, your dining manners, your sartorial skills. By the way, you hear the word sartorial, what comes to mind? <laughs> what comes to mind when you hear the word tutorial? Your dressing. Your dressing, right? Your personal grooming. Because there's no, there's no use looking all nice and corporate as you like this. You fall on a man wanting. Right? And your best self. Now, your brand. Tip number one your brand. Remember, you're a brand. Always be aware of the fact that you're a brand. And to succeed, you have to stand out. Something's going to stand you out. You're all here, you're all executive, you're all doing well. You come early to work, you leave late, you work hard, but something's going to stand you out. What makes you stand out? What makes you different? What's your name, man, please? Felicia. Felicia? Yes. Okay. What's your name? Ifunaya. What makes you different from each other? You come to work together, you come, you come to work at the same time, work hard, you work. <laughs> what makes you uh, Have I committed a full part? <laughs> <laughs> you don't come to say that. You don't come to say that. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> no, I'm just assuming. I'm just assuming. Right? And what stands you and what makes you different? What is different? Now, can you all, in two minutes, write down three things, three qualities that people say are intrinsically yours? Like everybody will say, oh, Felicia, you're very, you're very timely, you're very time conscious. Another person says you're time conscious. Your parents know you're time conscious. Your friends will say you're time conscious. That's right. Right? And I say, Felicia, oh, you pay attention to detail. Your boss will say it. Everybody says it. You know that's one of your intrinsic qualities. So please write down two or three intrinsic qualities that people keep saying are yours, are basically yours. In two minutes, please. Okay. 